Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to another live edition of Gardens of the Pious. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All praises due to Allah alone. We all praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leaves us say, none can show Him guidance. My dear viewers, today's episode is number 607 in the Blessed Seas of Riyadh al-Salihin by Imam Yahya ibn Sharaf al-Nawawi. May Allah have mercy on him. Today we'll begin with a new chapter, chapter number 258. The condemnation of the two-faced person. And yesterday or early this morning, I posted an image uh, which reflects a person who is double face, two faced, double standard, munafiq. And the hadith which warns against him, then I promise that will be explained insha'Allah in today's episode of Gardens of the Pious. Let's begin with the first ayah in this reference, Surah An Nisa, chapter number four. Ayah number 108. The Almighty Allah says, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يستغفون من الناس ولا يستغفون من الله وهو معهم إذ يبيتون ما لا يرضى من القول وكان الله بما يعملون محيطا and the ayah means they conceal their evil intentions and bad actions from people. But they can never conceal them from the Almighty Allah. And He is with them with His knowledge when they say spend the night in such as He doesn't accept of speech. And ever is Allah of what they do encompassing. Ayah number 108 of Surah An-Nisa. What is the story behind this ayah and the reason behind its revelation? There was a person by the name Tu'ma ibn Ubayriq. And this person was a munafiq. He committed theft. He stole dirah, an armor, from somebody. And when that was discovered, his family advised him, and with the assistance of some of his family members, to throw the armor or to bury it and hide it in somebody else's house. And this person was a Jew. And they said, look, the case is closed. Because definitely when they find the armor buried in the Jewish person's house, they will capture him and he will be Take him blameworthy for it. And of course, Rasulullah is going to believe you because you're a Muslim and he's a Yahudi, he's a Jew. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in one hadith, I'm just a human being. Inna ana bashar wa innakum takhtasimuna ilay. Wala alla ahadakum an yakuna alhanu bi hujjatihi min sahibih. And since I'm a human being, I don't have an access to know the unseen or to disclose the hidden intentions, good or bad. So if you guys seek my judgment, I'm going to judge according to the givings of the case in front of me. As a human being, I don't know the intentions. I don't know the hidden. So then he warned, if somebody was kind of more eloquent or dare to lie, to swear to Allah lying, to make up his case and the other one abstained. 
So I end up judging for a person and giving him something which is not his. Then in this case, I'm only giving him a piece of hellfire. Let him take it or leave it. That's a serious warning. The hadith in the beginning confirms and assures Muslims that Muhammad وسلم, was just a human being created like Adam, like Jesus, like everybody else. He was not created from Noor, like some people say. He was in the origin of the universe, like some others say. Uh, he was in the very first creation that Allah created, like others say. No. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشْرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَهُكُمْ إِلَهُ وَاحِدٌ فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُو لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا by the end of Surah Al-Kahf, last ayah. Say, O Muhammad, peace be upon him, I'm just a human being like you. I received the revelation from Allah that if you want to be saved, you should worship Allah alone and you should not associate with him any in worship. Okay? So when we go and we seek the judgment of the Prophet Sallallahu he didn't have an access to know who's lying and who's telling the truth. Unless if Allah were to tell him. And in this incident, Tu'ma ibn Ubayraq was a munafiq. What does it mean a munafiq? He's somebody who entered Islam and admitted to the oneness of Allah in public. But in reality, he wasn't. And he's either munafiq in respect of aqidah, he's not Muslim, but he's pretending to be Muslim for a worldly reason. Or he's a Muslim, but unfortunately, he is maintaining and keeping some of the evil traits of hypocrisy. Whenever he speaks, he lies. Whenever he promises, he breaks his promise. Whenever he's entrusted, he betrays. And if he were to dispute with somebody, he is definitely an awful person. Doesn't have boundaries. Nothing stops him from discrediting the other person, even if he's lying. وَإِذَا خَاصَمَ fajr. A person who possesses those four evil qualities is a pure hypocrite. And a person who maintains one of these evil traits, then he has one of the traits of hypocrisy. حَتَّى يَدْعَهَا Until he leaves it and he improves himself. So this guy, and we know his name, he committed theft. And when the theft was disclosed, he got rid of the armor, the item that he stole. And in order to get rid of the whole case and to blame it, on somebody else, he buried it or he hid it in somebody else's house. And this person was Jewish. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed all the previous ayat and this ayah to announce the innocence of the Jew and to disclose the evil intention and the plot of this munafiq, hypocrite, and his family and those who assisted him. And to tell the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when you judge between the people إِذَا حَكَمْتَ بَيْنَهُمْ فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْعَدْلِ Judge between them based on justice, not based on who is your follower and who is your enemy. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُونُوا قَوَّامِينَ لِلَّهِ شُهَدَاءَ بِالْقَصْدِ Then he commanded all the believers to be the same. Even if the dispute between you and a non-Muslim, between you and a Christian, between you and a Jewish person or an atheist, justice is justice, is not to be divided. Beautiful. Be equitable, for Allah loves those who are equitable. MashaAllah. So in this ayah, Allah condemned and disclosed the evil intention and exposed the munafiqeen. Those who did what? They concealed the evil intentions and deeds from people. But can they conceal it from Allah? Nay. Nay. They can never do so. Not at all. But the thing is, those people were shy of people and they weren't shy of Allah. They feared people, including the Prophet and the companions, and they feared not their Creator. While in reality, the one who is with them in private, even if they were alone, is Allah. وَهُوَ مَعَهُمْ إِذْ يُبَيِّتُونَ مَا لَا يَرْضَى مِنَ الْقَوْلِ Allah was already there with them in their council and in their secret meeting 
when they were plotting, we're going to do this. We're going to hide it in the Jewish house and we're going to blame it on him. But you idiot, Allah is with you. How, how is Allah with us? We have a little studio sitting here. Allah is with us in the cave. Muhammad, peace be upon him, assured Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, he said, لا تحزن إن الله معنا يعني, is he with us in this little cave? He's with us. Not physically. It's impossible to have boundaries for Allah and to be limited to a place or time. Allah is beyond all of that and that's why in his beautiful names we know that one of his names is Al-Awwal, the very first. Al-Akhir, the very last. He doesn't vanish. كل شيء هالك إلا وجهه. All right. وهو معهم إذ يبيتون ما لا يرضى من القول. Allah was already there with them when they were plotting an evil plot and they were lying. So they cannot conceal their evil intentions from Allah because Allah, with His knowledge, knows what is going on even in hidden places. Whenever it is blackout, whenever it is dark. Whenever you turn the lights off, Allah sees you. Allah knows what you're doing, what you're saying, what you're whispering, and what is even in your heart. Even if you didn't tell anyone about it, just between you and yourself. This guy on the day of the conquest of Mecca decided to get rid of the Prophet even after the Prophet set free all the prisoners of war, over 2,000, and said, اذهبوا فأنتم الطلقاء. And he didn't kill them, he didn't enslave them, he didn't uh, uh, imprison them, he didn't sell them as slaves. He said, you go, you're free. So this guy was walking while the Prophet performing tawaf. And he hid his dagger, which he dipped it in poison, so that he would stab the Prophet ﷺ from the side or the back. And this way, they will not be able to help him. He will die immediately. And even if I die, it doesn't matter. While he was getting so close to the Prophet ﷺ, he said, so and so. So what have you been? And what are you doing? He said, I'm just doing tawaf, O Prophet of Allah. He said, no, you're not. وَلَكِنْ حَدَّثَتْكَ نَفْسُكَ Yet, your own self spoke to you to do this. And you're hiding a dagger and you're going and you're planning to do this. So this guy said, I bear witness that indeed you are the true messenger of God. And I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but He. I swear to God, there was none with me. I did not reveal this plot to anyone. No one knew about it. So how did you know it? He said, Akhbarani Allah. The Almighty Allah informed me. So we all agree. That the Messenger of Allah definitely doesn't know the unseen. But the Almighty Allah informs him occasionally in order to support him in his claim of the prophethood. I'm a messenger from Allah. You know, I'm carrying a message to you from God. So he tells me a few things about the unseen. And when they fall as exactly I prophesied or I predicted, then you guys should believe that I'm truly the messenger of Allah. Have never ever told any prophecy and it didn't come true. But it happened to be the opposite. Why? Because إِلَّا مَنْ اِرْتَضَى مِنْ رَسُولٍ Allah doesn't let anyone know the unseen except some of His messengers whom Allah the Almighty revealed to them. So He's pleased with them and He provides them with information about the ghaib. Why? So that people will realize this guy is a true messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they wouldn't doubt that. All right. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ بِمَا يَعْمَلُونَ مُحِيطًا So Tu'ma ibn Ubayriq and his people were disclosed and their evil intention was disclosed and Allah said indeed Allah is fully aware and encompassing whatever they do. Not only of what is bad but what is good as well. In Surah Al-Mujadilah, the Almighty Allah says, مَا يَكُونُ مِن نَجْوَى ثَلَاثَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ رَابِعُهُمْ There is not a secret council of three, but Allah is with them, He is their fourth. 
ولا خمسة إلا هو سادسهم نور أو فايف بات الله إز ذا ستكس هيز ود ذيم ولا أدنى من ذلك ولا أكثر إلا هو معهم أينما كانوا ثم ينبئهم بما عملوا يوم القيامة So there is no secret counsel of three or four or five or two or one or even if one is talking to himself more or less but Allah is with you. You're whispering and he hears you. Why? What is the purpose? In order to disclose all of that on the day of judgment. What do you think when he says ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد All of that will be disclosed, exposed and then you will be account for that. The first hadith and it's only two ahadith in this chapter and the two ahadith are highly sound ahadith the first hadith is hadith number 1540 and Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu qal qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama tajiduna an nasa ma'adin khiyaruhum fil jahiliyyati khiyaruhum fil islami idha faquhu وتجدون خيار الناس في هذا الشأن أشدهم كراهية له وتجدون شر الناس ذا الوجهين الذي يأتي هؤلاء بوجه وهؤلاء بوجه متفق عليه That's a very seriously rich hadith أبو هريرة may Allah be pleased with him narrated that رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said people are like or is those who are excellent during the days of ignorance are also excellent after they accept Islam provided they acquire the knowledge and the understanding of the religion and you will find the best people in Islam those who had a deep hatred for leadership you will find the worst among people a double-faced person who appears to some people with one face and to the others with another face and may Allah protect us against that people are like always Ma'adin of course gold is very expensive always silver is expensive but it is lesser expensive aluminum is valuable but no comparison between aluminum silver and gold than iron so some people are of very high value by nature their natural instinct they're inclined to be kind they're inclined to be generous they're inclined to be truthful even if they were not Muslims so before Islam there were some people like that and then the Prophet Sallallahu said the best of mankind are those who had a good oris, good nature before Islam, even when they worship an idols. And then when they accepted Islam, they started learning the deen and they comprehended the deen. So they improved further. They maintained their good traits before Islam, generosity, truthfulness, honesty, courage, in addition to being God-fearing. And doing all of that after Islam solely for Allah's sake because people used to do that in Jahiliyyah maybe they will be the most generous why? so that the Arab will say Hatim al he is as generous as Hatim you know when somebody came in a year of drought he is passing by, he is traveling and Hatim doesn't have any food doesn't have any goat or sheep because everybody was starving so he slaughtered his only horse to feed that guest. Why? So people would say, Hatim is a generous person. He is the most generous person. And it was said in Islam, yes, you're generous, you're truthful, you're courageous, you're honest, you're sincere. But not to be said he is so and so and such and such. Not to be recognized among people with your good traits, rather to be recognized by Allah. 
And that's why in the hadith of the seven categories of people who will be sheltered under a shade which Allah will create exclusively for them on the day of resurrection. One of them is a man who gave in a charity. How much? It is in the anonymous. Nakira. In a sadaqa. It could be a bite. It could be a meal. It could be a check of a thousand or a hundred thousand. It doesn't matter. You and your capacity. But what matters is the level of sincerity and how much concealment you've observed while giving that charity. So he said, and a man who has given in charity with his right hand in such a secret and concealed fashion to the extent that his left hand didn't know how much his right hand has spent. Just to show us that whenever you do anything, make certain that you do it exclusively seeking the pleasure of Allah. If this is the case, you maintain the reward and it will be augmented. And if not, then the Almighty Allah says, I'm the richest of all. If anyone happened to associate with me any in worship or an act of obedience, I'm not going to take anything out of it. Give it to those whom you associated with me. I'm not interested in it. So people who were good before Islam and had good traits, when they become Muslims and they learn and they comprehend, then they do whatever they do of the good traits for the sake of Allah. They're the best at large, like exactly Oris, like Ma'adin, metals and minerals. And then he added, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the best of people, in respect of the leadership, yani they, don't he, they don't hate the leadership or the Imams or the Sultans or the rulers, no. The best of people are those who hate being appointed or being in a charge. They run away from it. No, 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 that's a big responsibility. I don't want to. So those people whom we are supposed to look for them and elect them to be our leaders, if they're qualified, they themselves are not interested. They, they perceive it as a big responsibility. So what is happening nowadays? The worst of leadership. Why? Those people rule and overcome their people with an iron fist, authoritarian regimes. And when they get in office, they don't want to leave. People curse them day and night, and they curse their people. They rip them off, and they take their resources in order to enrich uh, themselves and their family members. Those are the worst of people, as the Prophet Wasallam said. But the best of people are those who hate these positions, abhor being in the leadership, and better off. But hey, we need you. You're the most qualified person. Well, if this is the case and people insist, fine. But they do not nominate themselves. Then he says, وَتَجِدُونَ شَرَّ النَّاسِ ذَا And indeed the worst of all people, the person who is double-faced. He meets you, Habibi, give me a hug. You know, I really love you. I miss you, man. And all of that. And behind you, he goes to your boss. And he says, you know, he talked of an hour earlier. He was meeting the girl. You know, while he's working, he's always on the phone. I don't know why you keep him. So he keeps stabbing you from behind, stabbing you from behind. But when he meets you, cheers for a smile and he give me a hug. This is the worst kind of person. Why? When you have an enemy or a colleague or a challenger or a competitor, whom you know that you, you know, you're having discord. You don't like him, he doesn't like you. So you're cautious. Versus when somebody is giving you a hug and he's a, he is, a, what do you say, a, a wolf in sheep's skin. He meets you with a smile, but he stabs you from behind. This is the kind of person whom the Prophet ﷺ warned against and he said, Sharri nas, Sharri nas before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A man of honor, he's a man of a single standard. A man of ethics, a man of values. If I see you doing something wrong and I disapprove it, I say, look, uh, this is not right. I, and I don't think I can just go along with you in what you're doing. Okay. But you support him. You acknowledge that you're happy. And you turn around and you stab him from behind. This is the man with the double face, as the Prophet said, Sharra nasi dal wajhaini. الذي يأتي هؤلاء بوجه وهؤلاء بوجه. He meets those people with a face 
and then he meets others with a different face and so on. He's a munafiq, he's a hypocrite. Before the break, we'll take one more hadith quickly collected by Imam Bukhari and Muhammad ibn Zayd in hadith number 1541. إنا ندخل على سلاطيننا فنقول لهم بخلاف ما نتكلم إذا خرجنا من عندهم قال كنا نعد هذا نفاقا على عهد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عبد الله بن عمر's grandson by the name Muhammad ibn Zaid some people came to him and they said you know whenever we visit the rulers the sultans the governors, we tell them things different than what we feel about them. And when we go out, we curse them and we tell people something different. So we approve them, we encourage them, we praise them, and we admire them in their faces. And when we get out, we expose their faults and we say they are evil, they are unjust, they are thieves, they are, they are, they are. What do you think of that? He said, well, according to what we have witnessed at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu this is a typical hypocrisy. And this is one of the reasons why the rulers go astray. Because they surround themselves with that fifth column, with those kind of people who would never tell them you've done something wrong. Rather, wallahi, if they hold a pen and they scratch while they're talking, oh, nice painting, sir. Beautiful. Is this the new plan for the new capital? Is this a... You're a munafiq. You're a hypocrite. You're the biggest liar. I know, but you know, what can I do? He is very tyrant. If I say otherwise, he may imprison me. He may fire me. He will, maybe even he will kill me. But the Prophet Sallallahu says in the hadith, Sayyidu Shuhada'i Hamza. The master of the martyrs before Allah on the day of judgment is Hamza and a man who stood before a tyrant sultan or ruler and he said to him the truth and he it cost him his life. So he died as a shaheed. This is the Islamic teachings in this perspective and never ever be double standard or with two faces because that puts that person in the worst of the worst. May Allah guide us what is best. It's time to take a short break. And inshallah, my dear viewers, we'll be back in a couple minutes. Please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome back. Let me remind you with our phone numbers in case they are interested to give us a call, beginning with the area code. 002 then 010951 alternatively same area code then 01005469323 the whatsapp numbers area code 0013478060025 and finally area code 0013614891503 our first caller today no man from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, no man, I'm doing fine. And you? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Sheikh, um, may Allah give you um, barakah for your um, well doing. You're doing good for the community, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Sheikh, I have multiple questions, but I guess I have to settle with one or two today. Okay, sure. <laughs> So uh, my question is, one of the brother asked me to ask you, um, he used to supply uh, homemade food to the uh, groceries, mm. but he didn't have any license, which you need to have in, um, in your near to supply into the grocery stores. Mm. So when he got to know that he doesn't have any license, so he stopped this because he's thinking this is um, not good. He should not doing it. Now his question is, can he supply food to his friends and family if his friends and family ask for him, like, okay, can you make some food for me and he get paid for that? Is it okay? It is absolutely permissible. Without license? Yes. Well, let me okay. tell you one thing. Let me tell you one thing. You're yes. asking about legitimacy from the point of uh, view of lawful and unlawful. The food is lawful and his earning is lawful. 
taking care of the rest of the state legislations, that is his responsibility. But if you're asking about his earning from a legitimate a religious point of view, it is a lawful earning because I'm providing halal items and I'm earning halal money, okay? Then yes. we, we always advise people to respect the law of the states or the countries that they're living in, not to be out law and not to put themselves in trouble with the law. But now you're saying family members and uh, friends and I'm cooking for them and they pay me. I, I doubt that there is any problem with that, okay? Amatullah from India. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, Sheikh. Yeah, go ahead, Amatullah. Um, my first question was that um, if I do something that I'm doubtful about, like I'm thinking whether this is haram or halal, like, like just to give you a very silly example. For example, I'm, I have eaten an apple. And now I'm thinking whether uh, eating an apple is haram or halal. But I'm on the end of the world of, you know, thinking that it is haram. So I make repentance for it. And I, you know, promise that I won't do it again until I find out from a scholar if it is halal. Will my repentance will be accepted? Yes, indeed, it is accepted. Uh, especially that's a doubtful matter and you didn't know about it. But I'd like to clarify to the viewers one thing. The example that Amatullah from India provided is hypothetical. She is not literally referring to an apple and the possibility that it could be haram. But she's just giving an example. Otherwise, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said in the hadith which is uh, narrated by An-Nu'man ibn Bashir, may Allah be pleased with him, and it's a sound hadith, that the halal is very clear and obvious. And what is forbidden is clear and obvious. Al-halal ubayin wal-haram ubayin. Then when it comes to the gray area in between, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said and he advised to avoid it in order to protect your honor and your religious commitment. Thank you, Amatullah from India. Assalamu Alaikum. Dunyata from Kosovo. Yes. Assalamu Alaikum, Sister Dunyata, how are you? Thank you, thank you, Sheikh. How are you? We're all doing fine, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you and your family. What is your question, Dunyata? Alhamdulillah. I, well, Sheikh, I, I called you very recently about a question about fasting. Mm -hmm. But I want to, to know something more about this issue, if I may. Sure. Go ahead and present your so, question. So, Sheikh, I have... So, Sheikh, as I told you before, I have an illness, and because of that, I cannot fast. I, um, because I have to use pills every twelve hours. Mm. So, I, so since I am in this condition, what shall I do for this Ramadan that is coming? If I'm not going to be able to fast. Taib, sister Dunyata, while you are on the line again, is this illness? Chronic, in other terms, is it something that is lasting, you live with it to the rest of your life, or is it something temporary, and once you're treated from it, you'll be a normal person and you wouldn't need the medication anymore? No, Sheikh, inshallah, it's not chronic. It's not, uh, inshallah, the doctor said, inshallah, like, will leave, but uh, the pills, but... I don't know how much time is going to go. Um, maybe one year or two or three or I don't know. Okay, I got your questions, Sister Dunyata. When Allah the Almighty stated in 184, uh, chapter number two, Surah Al Baqarah, that those who are either sick, ill, or traveling, they are exempt from fasting. Then he added, فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ That makes it very clear that the illness which is temporary, which is treatable, which is not everlasting, the person may skip fasting if he or she is ill to take the medications and they don't have to feed anybody else or anything, but they will have to make up the missed days of Ramadan whenever they recover. So after consulting your doctor 
And he says, no, maybe this Ramadan, next Ramadan, you will be okay. So skip this Ramadan fasting and no problem. And then inshallah, once you recover fully and you don't need to take any medications, make up the days or the whole Ramadan which you skip its fasting. If the doctor said it may take very long and we don't know how long will it take, uh, in this case, you go ahead and feed one poor person per each day you skip its fasting. After you skip its fasting, not in advance. Barakallahu fiki. So by the end of Ramadan, if it was 29 days or 30 days, you can provide lunch or one meal for 30 people all at once. And that will do it, inshallah. Thank you, Dunyata from Kosovo. Nida from the USA, welcome to the program, Nida. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Before asking a question, first I want to say I'm glad to hear your voice. And uh, um, may Allah give your father a generous dose, Amin. Amin. And give you a good health and your family Amin. always, Amin. 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 Thank you so much, Nida, for your beautiful dua. And likewise for yourself and your family. Thank you. And brother, you're always in my prayers. Um, uh, one question is this, that uh, my friend, uh, she is, uh, live in my country. Um, she's in need. Uh, his husband is uh, not a very thoughtful husband. So sometimes, most of the time, he's not worried about the kids fees, like the school fees. Mm. Um, and he, she have four children. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes on and off, I help her with the school fee. Mm -hmm. So I don't know because there's other pupils too. I, I love to help her, but at the same time, I want to know that my zakat is eligible for her, uh, for the kids' fee, if I help her. Okay, I got your question, Sister Nada. Thank you so much. Thank you for your beautiful dua, and thank you for your good feeling towards that friend. Uh, the responsibility of providing for the children is the fathers. And the Prophet wasallam warned a family father or a guardian who have the means and he wastes those who are under his guardianship. Either because he's miser or because he's negligent or because he's wasting the money on himself and neglecting his family. So in this case, the sister has to step in and demand her rights. If the man is not fulfilling his duties while he's got the means, then that's something that she needs to sort out with him. If she is poor herself and needs this zakah money, yes, you can give her. But to support her children and to pay for their tuitions, while the husband is financially capable? No, because they're rich and they are his children, not only her children. And we have plenty of families. We have orphans, we have miskeens, we have poor people who are broke. We have people who got laid off and they got fired. They don't have a job since last year. The priority to dispense my zakat to those who are more in need, not to pay the tuitions for, and you're calling from the USA. So public schools are for free. So when I put my kids in private schools, pay. You don't have the means, we'll help you. But you have the means and you're not willing to pay for your kids. Uh, it's not really my responsibility. May Allah guide us to what is best. Sister Shamsa from the UK. Hello. Yeah, Assalamu alaikum, Sister Shamsa. Welcome to the program. Walaikum salam. Walaikum salam. Uh, Sheikh, I just wanted to ask a question. It's a bit, um, basically, over the last maybe a year, I've been really struggling with my salah and my wudu. Um, my wudu has taken me ages and ages, and I've tried, tried to stop doing that, but I also struggle with the salah recitation. Mm. Um, my Salah can take me about two hours to read Isha. Um, it could take me nearly one and a half hour to read, and it's just a recitation. Mm. I really struggle with it, and I don't know why this is happening or how. I end up with a sore throat. Um, I have a few health conditions, but I don't think it's 
I don't know if it's anything to do with that, but I'm just really struggling. I end up with pains in my throat. I recently got lymph nodes that are swollen, um, but I don't know if it's because I'm putting too much pressure when I'm trying to recite. I'm always thinking I'm well, sister, reciting. Sister Shamsa, besides what uh, you've mentioned earlier, uh, in the rest of your daily activities, do you experience also similar trouble or the trouble is only in observing the prayers and not uh, being certain whether you recited correct or, or not, you've made wudu correct or not? Yeah, it's just it's just with my salah, n not in the day, it's just with my salah and wudu. Okay, just in the prayer and in the wudu, okay. Um, perhaps I can help you in this respect. So whenever you're making wudu, you're assuming that you didn't wash one arm on one leg or you didn't wipe over your hair, so you go back to redo it. Am I correct? Uh, yes, but now I, I do try not to do that, but I take ages to complete my wudu, even if I do it three times like, you know, three times washing the arm, three times washing the other arm. Uh, Sister, Shamsa, Sister Shamsa, first of all, I ask Allah the Almighty to enable you to overcome this uh, whispers of Satan. This is not an OCD because it's not something related to everything you do in your daily activities, in the kitchen or while driving or picking up the kids or dropping them off or shopping. It's only in the prayers. And uh, this is part of the whispers of Satan in order to uh, make you hate and disgust your worship. Either because it, is, it has become too heavy, and as you say, it's taken ages, or make you believe that you cannot do it anymore, and it will not be accepted. So what we need to do is, if I forget a lot while performing wudu, Everyone now has a phone and it has a, a camera. Turn your cam on and film yourself while making wudu. And you know the good news is you don't have to wash three times. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to wash sometimes once and sometimes twice and sometimes three times. And I have another good news for you. It is not that like if you've done it twice you have to do every uh, body part in wudu twice, no. If you wash your hands three times and you did rinse your mouth and your nose once, that is valid. Then your arms two times instead of three, that is valid. Just to give you ease. So don't worry about that. Washing once, washing twice, washing twice is the ideal. But if it didn't happen three times, if you're not sure, at least I've done it once, move on. And this is how you defeat Satan, you overcome his whispers. So wudu shouldn't take more than a couple minutes. Film yourself and you will realize that you never forgot to wash your arm. You never forgot to wipe over your hair. And you did wash both feet, but it was waswasa from Satan. As for the prayer, you don't have to recite out loud if you have not sore throat. Recite Surah Al-Fatiha and Qul Hu Allahu Ahad. That's it. If shaitan or the whisper says to you, you know, you didn't recite this or you neglected that, ignore it and move on in order to overcome the whispers of a shaitan. The number of rakahs, I keep forgetting, did I pray three or four? Once you film yourself, you turn your camera on and you record yourself, you realize that you did pray perfect. Same number of rakahs which are required, but it was all a constant whisper. Also, as far as the azkar to be recited, I found saying la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-azim is one of the greatest dhikr in respect of overcoming the waswasa. Because it means, number one, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said in the hadith, this form of remembrance of Allah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-azim. We all know it. It was delivered to us from a treasure beneath the throne of the most beneficent. And it means there is no mighty nor power but with Allah. We know that, but what is the relationship between this and waswasa? There is no changing from one condition to another but by the, by the leave of Allah. From a terrible condition to a better condition but by the leave of Allah. From waswasa to certainty but by the leave of Allah. So we're going to increase saying 
لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العظيم. Okay. Uh, the morning adhkar and the evening adhkar are a must in your condition. And also put in your hands together and recite in al-mu'awwidat before going to sleep al-ikhlas, al-falaq, al-nas. Then blowing in your palms twice and wiping over your entire body to the best of your ability is actually a great means of warding off those whispers and protection against a shaitan, Satan, his uh, hosts, and their plots against you. It will take some time, but if you are serious about doing what we've mentioned earlier, you will definitely overcome this condition, inshallah. And I say to every person who is just in the beginning or on the, uh, you know, on the track of uh, being not sure how many times I washed and I repeat my wudu, be careful because it begins a little, then it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger until it engulfs you entirely. As the sister says, it takes ages to perform wudu, it shouldn't. May Allah make it easy for you. I, I'll take the last caller today, Idris from Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum, Idris. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, respect to Shaykh. How are you doing, sir? Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Idris, for asking. And you? I'm I'm doing okay. Thank you, sir. First of all, I would like to pray for your respected father who had passed away. Uh, and I have lost my father. I can uh, I can surely feel how how do you feel about your father? May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala grant him and my father uh, Jannatul Firdaus with uh, the remaining Ummah of uh, Islam. Amen. And uh, uh, I would like to pray for the uh, people who work behind the calls and collecting our calls and solving our pro problems. Thank you Amen. for for your time. And I I have only one short question is that. Whenever I get uh, angry or uh, I'm uh, supposed to utter some uh, harsh words, uh, I usually say Allahu Akbar or I say La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah Ali wa Azim. Am I doing uh, okay? Is it okay to say that or not? Thank you. You're doing Samaritan. perfectly okay, Idris. You're doing perfectly okay. Any word of remembrance of Allah, but you add to that, فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ So you should seek refuge with Allah again is the outcast Satan because this anger is caused because of him. Brothers and sisters, we've just come to the end of today's edition of Gardens of the Pious. Until next time, I leave you all in the care of Allah. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Allah, our God is the greatest, the one and only glory to him. All in humans to be the best And give his best to religion to them So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about him in paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling their best with the cheapest price.